All right, so now to solve a logarithmic equation. Our process to solve a log equation or a logarithmic equation is to first isolate the logarithmic expression, log base b of m, just like we would isolate an exponential expression, b to the x. From here, we're going to apply our log rule that says we can take the base of our log and shift it over with this arrow to the base of the other side, giving us m equals b to the c. If you prefer, you can also raise each side of the equation with a base of b and still get the same result. Either method is perfectly fine. This is more of a shortcut. The only difference between a logarithmic equation and an exponential equation is that when you end up solving 4x, you then need to check your solutions with a table to check for domain inconsistencies or issues. Because when you solve for m, and therefore your variable, whatever was originally plugged inside your log has to be a positive number. We cannot plug zero or negative numbers inside of a log. So these solutions may end up giving you false solutions, things that don't actually work in the original domain of the problem before the log was removed. So with that, let's go ahead and try the example log base 4 of x plus 3 minus 1 equals 1. The first thing that we have to do is isolate the logarithmic expression. That's log base 4 of x plus 3 in this case. So we're going to add 1 to each side of the equation to get this alone, giving us log base 4 of x plus 3 is equal to 2. At this point, we now have the logarithmic expression isolated by itself, so we can take the base and shift it over to the other side as the base of this 2, removing the log portion of this problem and changing it to an exponential equation, giving us x plus 3 is equal to 4 to the second, or 4 squared, which simplifies to give us, oh, let's switch over to this marker, x plus 3 equals 16. And now from here, we can subtract 3 from each side to get this x alone. That gives us x equals 13. And it's tempting to just want to circle your answer at this point and call it done. But remember, we now have to check the solution inside the domain of the original problem. This isn't to say that we're checking this value like we would an exponential equation, plugging it back into the original problem to see if it all simplifies to give us 1. That won't always work because when you perform any type of condensing or any simplification, it may end up working out. But what we care about is that this 13 will not cause a value of 0 or a negative inside of that log. So we're going to take this x equals 13 value and creating a table with our value of x and whatever was inside of our log, in this case x plus 3, we're going to check. If we take 13 and plug it into this expression that was inside of our log, x plus 3, we'll get 13 plus 3 is 16. 16 is a value that is greater than 0, so it checks out, meaning x equals 13 is our solution. If we had found that this value were 0, or negative 5, for instance, that would tell us it fails the domain check, which would mean that there would be no solution since our only possible answer doesn't actually work. Okay, take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can solve 2 natural log of 3x minus 5 is equal to negative 3. 
All right, trying this out, we'll start by isolating this natural log by adding 5 to each side of the equation, which gives us 2 natural log of 3x is equal to 2. And now, to get this x alone, or more precisely, get the natural log of 3x alone, we are going to divide by this value that is in front of the natural log. I'm going to switch markers again really quick. So we'll divide by this 2 on each side, which gives us the natural log of 3x is equal to 1. From here, we now need to move the base to the other side to get rid of our log. In this case, when we move the base to the other side, it's a little bit unsure what the base is when you look at it, but remember natural log has a base of E, the natural base. So there's technically an E here. We just don't write it because that wouldn't be simplified to show it. But we're really shifting this base of e over, giving us 3x equals e to the first power, or 3x just equals e. And now, to get x alone, we can divide each side by 3 to give us x equals e over 3. You might think that we'll need a calculator to check this with our table but it's actually going to work out very nicely because when we make our table we're checking our x value inside of the value that was inside of this natural log that's 3x so we're plugging in e over 3 if we were to plug that into a calculator we'd find an approximation but this is the exact answer so we're just going to use that if we plug e over 3 into 3x this 3 times the c over 3, the 3's will cancel out like so, leaving us with just e. And e is a positive number. It represents a number approximately equal to 2.7. That is greater than 0. That's all we need to know. So our table check works out. This confirms that this is a solution to the original problem.